thing I love about his cooking is it's so colorful on the plate. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of whimsical, but it's simultaneously restrained and very expressive. It's, 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 it's really a great stuff. It has the stature it has because of just an, in, an intense desire to be at the top of the game. So to see that, that level of service is really important for the Canadian scene. Highly refined and very sophisticated. And it has changed to become much more reflective of the West Coast. David Hawksworth's style is really elegant. Definitely, Hawksworth Restaurant is a glamorous restaurant. He's managed to climb that hill and get to the top, and then now he has to stay there. So the heat never leaves the pot, actually. I'm David Hawksworth. What runs through all of my creations is a passion to create fresh, clean food while pushing the envelope of contemporary Canadian cuisine. At Hawksworth, we're proud to be a Vancouver restaurant with the ability to compete with any restaurant in the world. I feel it's imperative that Canada's culinary future remain bright. So I started the Hawksworth Young Chef Scholarship with that in mind, supporting brilliant young chefs and inspiring them to produce great food that incites conversation. Come with me as I travel across Canada in search of the country's best young chefs. They'll be tested through a series of cooking competitions where one winner will be awarded a $10,000 scholarship coupled with an internship, or as we call it, a stage, to any restaurant anywhere in the world. Along the way, we'll meet a few of my friends to learn about their culinary journey and what it took to rise to the top. I'm proud to call Vancouver my home. It's where I'm from and it's where I've always wanted to be. Over the years, I've watched this city grow and develop into a world-class culinary destination. Its proximity to the ocean and emphasis on local farms and produce provide an endless supply of ingredients embraced by all cultures. It's exciting to watch Vancouver make its mark. Today, I'm going to explore my city through fresh eyes with Bikram Bitch. Spices are like notes to me, right? How can you say one note is better than anything else? As a musician, if you said one note is better than the other, then you're not doing justice to the other. They all impart different flavors, they impart, give different things to it. It's wrong to say which one's the best spice for you. Vancouver loves Vikram's Indian cuisine. His restaurant Vijas always has a line out the door, and for good reason. It's redefined Indian food in Vancouver and embraced all of what the West Coast has to offer. I sat down and talked to him about his professional journey. I would go out for dinners, and you know what the worst part was? You could not take a date to an Indian restaurant. And you know why? Because the food and the wine was, was terrible. Yeah. And it almost was like every Indian restaurant had their mom working in the kitchen, their sister serving. Everything was a, a mom-pop shop. Yeah, well, it was more about consumption. Right? Yeah. Right, yeah. People only ordered butter chicken and chicken tikka masala because that's all they knew. Are those actually Indian dishes? To be honest with you, they were Indian dishes created by Indians for the Brits. Yeah. And it was terrible. And I was like, there's got to be a better way. We have to do a better job of, of... So I decided to open up a restaurant up with the proper stemper, proper glasses, proper service. 23 years have gone by that I won Best Indian. Mm -hmm. And then this year was a big deal because we opened up my Shanti. And so Vijis got gold, Maishanti got silver, and Rangoli got... So I own the podium. <laughs> I mean, tell me, how has West Coast been part of your culinary journey? Vancouver and, and the West Coast, there is no thing as everybody talks about West Coast cuisine, but there isn't a West Coast cuisine that doesn't exist, right? So it's, um, so we've coined it as what we do as contemporary Canadian, right? Which is vague as vague can be. Here's my question, do you actually want to be... West Coast? Yeah. 
No, I, w I would like to be contemporary Canadian. Like, what is West Coast cuisine to you? For me, it's always been like, here's a village mentality. We have a beautiful ocean that produces great sustainable seafood. We have Okanagan that produces great wines. I have my spices that come from India. It has not influenced me as such. I just have embraced where I live. Do you think this is your love? Everything about the whole business is amazing. And do you think you've actually reached that perfection in your kitchen and your food? Uh, no, no, I never will. I mean, we're, we're at a great point right now, for sure. The best it's ever been. Food-wise? Yeah. And, and everything. I think right now, I think I'm, I'm very happy with where we are. This is Main Street, uh, 50th, East 50th. What's uh, the significance here? Well, one of the biggest significances is that a, a sign here is written in English and in Punjabi. A federal, a federal sign, a street sign, can only be in English or in French. Yeah. So to get that designation means it's a cultural area. Yeah. And I'll show you some other stuff. This is curry leaves. And so the curry leaves, they actually only come from Fiji. Yeah. So yeah. you break it like this. Yeah. And you smell it. it smells like curry. Yeah, it's crazy. Huh? Where do you use it? Mostly in stews, karela, the best thing you can ever, ever, ever have for your blood. It's so bitter that you cannot even eat it. It's so bitter. Well, what do you do with that? Just take a bite of that. No. Oh. Oh, take a bite. No, I can't. You do it. <laughs> it just, yeah, your whole face is just turning it's inside out. And so obviously this is what shows you the spices. Yep. They come from India. Black, this is black salt. What is that? So there's a region between India and Pakistan that has a cave that is made of, that has salt. It has high hydrogen sulfide. It tastes a little bit like farts. If you open that salt up, you put like, it in your mouth, fart. Okay. <laughs> it does, I'm telling you. <laughs> I try to avoid that flavor, but yeah, okay. <laughs> this is serious stuff. Yeah. What I like about this is everything is, I mean, there's tons of it, but it's all super, super fresh. I think more than that, I think you should buy, you should be buying this stuff here, because you need your hair <laughs> to go mahogany henna. This is, I think this is the kind of woman that David should have married, an Indian princess. I heard Vikram's been mentoring talented young cooks at his latest venture, My Shanty. So we want to go check it out. I've noticed here that, you know, we have a, there's a mixture of cooks that are working in here versus what's happening at Pidges. In 94, when I first opened the restaurant up, I believed that Indian women were like the best cooks and they could only do the best job. But, you know, with time, you have to become modern. You have to accept that. And you have to understand that this de democratically beautiful country that we live in, called Canada, has chefs who are non-Indian descent, and they have the same passion and love in, in the flavors, and they're willing to learn. So I decided this year, after 23 years, that my line cook is not going to need an Indian line only. And, and they're young kids, and you know, it's time for us to, to let them blossom. And maybe in two months from now, I would just say, create your own dishes, create your own style. Yeah, I mean, you have to let go at some point, you've got to let them create and try to put things on the menu. And they learn from your advice and, and your mentoring, you're saying, this is more traditional, this is good, uh, you know, add this. And, and that's all part of the whole learning experience. That's why, you know, we are here today, sitting down at my Shanti, because I really think these kids have what it takes. And a couple of years from now, they will uh, be with amongst the best of the best chefs. So. Yeah. You know, getting these guys to do dishes for you and getting them in competitions and doing some traveling and different stages, uh, that makes, you know, Canada's food scene stronger. And definitely, you know, I've been across the country and I've seen, you know, some amazing food. When I was in the UK, every year there's the, uh, the the Rue Brothers Scholarship. It was a point of discussion every year. It was the real competition. It was real cooking. But I thought it was a fantastic opportunity because it it gave uh, you know the winner a good uh, prize and gave them uh, some publicity. And then you know they got a stage anywhere in the world they wanted to go, which I thought was fantastic. And that you know I really wanted to see something like that happen in Canada because I think we have amazing cooks here. We've got great restaurants and we should be making more of a, a scene of, of, of what we do here, right? So that's where the inspiration came from. 
Behind every dish is a hungry young chef. To keep Canada's food scene vibrant and dynamic, it's crucial to foster these young chefs and recognize them for what they are, the future culinary elite. Next, we'll check out a selected group of Vancouver's top young chefs as they face off for a shot at the $10,000 Hawksworth Young Chef Scholarship. They come from all over the city, each with a unique journey, but what they all have in common is that they're striving to set a new standard for Canadian cooking.